Hi there. So since getting my foundation amateur license uh, last October, um, it's become clear to me pretty quickly that in terms of your transmitting setup, things have to be a lot more stringent than uh, if you're just receiving. Um, you know, standing wave ratio, you know, matching the antenna is really important, etc. Um, and from my point of view, I don't have a huge amount of space in the garden for a very large antenna. Um, so taking the advice from someone at Martin Lynch and Sons, I bought this, which is a super stick uh, MP1C HF VHF antenna, basically just a telescopic rod with a kind of coil that you can adjust. Um, and it does match very well. Uh, with my FDM Duo, which has a built-in SWA meter, um, because I bought this, I think I mentioned it, uh, MFJ 949E uh, antenna tuner, uh, and I can get it set up very well. The problem is, is that the MP1C needs a really excellent um, ground plane. They work best apparently sat on the top of cars, etc. But my car's fiberglass, so not even that's going to work. Uh, and when it's set up with the tripod that it came with, you know, it's sort of two or three meters off the ground. Uh, you know, I can transmit on 40 meters and nobody can hear me. So, um, and as an, another of my uh, ham radio friends told me, there's no substitute for metal in the air. Um, so anyway, I was talking to Graham, a radio cruncher. You may well be aware of his excellent YouTube channel. He uh, refurbishes uh, vintage radios. And he emailed me this article from um, Practical, Practical Wireless, February 2004. It's from an inverted L antenna, um, which he thought might be suitable for me because um, it gets you quite a lot of wire in the air in a sort of relatively small space. Uh, and so this is effectively the design. So what you have is a seven megahertz trap, uh, just six and a half meters uh, on one end of it, 9.9 .9 meters on the other. You need a single kind of supporting rod at the end of the garden, um, and then preferably attach this thing via a monofilament filament to chimney stack. Um, and then at the base of the antenna, the design calls for an earth rod, uh, a piece of uh, electrical block um, for earthing. So Graham uh, basically felt that this would out, way outperform the uh, MP1C antenna. So uh, I started gathering all the parts and in fact I had most of them, the um, electrical connectors and, and all the rest of it. And then there's uh, obviously a length of coaxial cable uh, running along the ground into the house. Um, so here I have 20, well I bought 25 meters of cable and I put one of these crimp style BNC connectors on one end of it, left the other end free um, to cut it to length when I set this thing up. Um, now this design um, is such that it will operate on top band and 40 meters, so effectively 3.5 megahertz and 7 megahertz which is uh, the latter is, is my kind of area of interest uh, and you hear a lot of UK hams uh, around uh, 7 megahertz 40 meters so uh, and apparently given the amount of space this antenna takes um, it performs really well in a much smaller space than a traditional dipole uh, would require um, and the author also says that, well, he describes himself as a laser DX, or I should say that the author is Len Paget, GM0ONX. Um, he describes himself as a lazy DXer, a bit like me. Uh, he'll take he'll take the easy option, effectively. Um, with this antenna, he's had a lot of fun working uh, stations in North Africa, Middle East, on, on top band and 7 megahertz, something he could never achieve with a G5RV, uh, contorted to fit in his garden. So... Okay, so that sounds exactly like what I need. So, uh, I've actually already made the seven megahertz trap, and here it is, and um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so the design calls for a 40 millimeter kind of 
water waste pipe with 11 turns of coax and then the core um, which you can see here at one end um, basically attaches to the coaxial shielding at the other end and then effectively you attach uh, one end of uh, the actual wire either side effectively so um, it's really important that these are cut as close to the tube as possible to make sure that the capacitance um, and the uh, inductance uh, is, is correct um, so uh, and I think I've managed to do it so um, we had some spare uh, waste pipe at work uh, around 11 turns of uh, 50 m coax um, and I think even we have this stuff called scotch coat which is kind of like a waterproofing varnish and so it's really important this has got to be waterproof because um, capillary action of water will travel up the uh, inside coaxial cable and uh, destroy its properties so I've painted everything with this scotch coat so hopefully that is suitably waterproofed um, and so in terms of the support you can buy these things um, you can buy them on eBay for sort of 20 30 40 quid well you can pay a lot for them actually um, but this design is pretty straightforward um, so I went to Ma um, a sports shop Decathlon and bought a seven meter basically it's one of these fishing poles uh, seven meter I think it costs like 10 quid so um, so I'm going to uh, use that as the support at the end of the garden well actually probably what I'm going to do is attach it to, to the shed somehow with a couple of metal loops or whatever so um, so yeah so that's the design so I thought I'd share it with you um, it's raining today. I was planning to set this up tonight, um, later on today, but it's so wet now. I'm, if it's still raining tonight, I'm definitely not going to do it. But um, but there you go. It, I started this project a couple of weeks ago, um, but I've only been doing it as and when um, I've had time. So uh, I think if you bought all the parts, including the earth rod, which I got from Screwfix, uh, I've already put that in the garden, you could you could build this and put it up in a day, I think, quite easily. So, um, so there you go. So, I just thought I'd share that with you. My um, career in as a as a radio ham hasn't really started yet. Um, as I said, I haven't had a QSO on HF because because no one can, could hear me with the MP1 uh, MP1C. Um, I've got one of those Baofeng Baofeng uh, UV5R, well a GT3, and programmed it with Chirp, and I can contact two or three of the local repeaters but there's never anyone on them so uh, you know I need to kind of kickstart my uh, ham radio uh, career and hopefully um, installing this antenna um, will mean that somebody can hear me now I discovered two days ago that one of the guys that works for me is actually a radio ham himself um, you know who would have thought so uh, uh, when I've got this set up um, and I'm ready to transmit, I can text him, and if he's near his shack, uh, he can switch on and we see if we can uh, conduct a, my, well my first QSO. It'd be interesting to see. So there you go, inverted L. Uh, looking forward to setting it up in the garden and um, looking forward to my first QSO. Hopefully, this is the key to it. Um, interestingly, one other point is that. The author suggests that you cut the actual conductor uh, about half a meter longer than you need it and start chopping it uh, until you get the um, uh, optimized soir. Um, but because I have the MFJ, I'm cutting it just slightly longer and I'm going to bolt it all together. And then hopefully with the MFJ, I can tune uh, tune it such that it, I, I achieve very good soir anyway. Um, yeah, the ELAD has uh, an excellent kind of built-in standing wave ratio sort of measurement and uh, works really well so uh, that's the one thing that's my one deviation from the uh, from the, from the, not from the design but from the uh, kind of the build uh, so uh, we'll see Ho hopefully uh, it will work out so there you go inverted L for a small garden um, obviously more videos to come um, if it works really well and probably do another video if it doesn't work really well uh, just as an update Okay, well, thanks for watching.